What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a really embarrassing video of me pitching a sub two transaction to a listing agent. Now, there, there's a property, it's been on market for I think like 90 days or something. This is a property where they don't have negative equity but they're basically selling the property for a break even number. Meaning, th once they sell the property, all of the equity that, that they have, all of the money that, that they would potentially make is all going to like the listing agent and the buyer side agent and maybe closing costs. So these people who are in this position where they can't sell their property and make any money and if the property has been on market for an extended period of time these are people who are really really great potential uh, sub two transaction type um, sellers because they can't lower the price of their property because if they do they're gonna have to come out of pocket and you can hear the listing agent say that in this uh, in this video now here's the thing I want to share this with you it's really embarrassing I when I was doing it I was stoked I'm like you know I'm pre-worked out I had a bunch of pre-workout I had a bunch of coffee in my system I'm like jacked up I'm selling you know I'm feeling really good and then when I went back and I watched it I'm like oh man it's a little cringy dude you're like a little bit hot kind of interrupting a little bit super like I uh, trying to kind of sell sell and the reason I'm telling you that is because for me it's a great learning experience to watch myself certainly humbling but for you I want to share with you because this um, this conversation I sent a letter of intent around this property I've answered some of the sellers questions they are interested in the sub two deal I don't know if I'm gonna get this deal or if this deal is gonna close but what I want you to know is when you watch this and you see like man this guy did a crappy job or maybe in some areas I did an okay job and some other areas I could have done a little bit better I want you to know that if I can do it then then you can do it and so watch this video tell me what you think about it in the comments give me some pointers if you think I you know hey Johnny you can improve in this area or maybe what you did over here was good I'm definitely open to suggestions and definitely open to the feedback just want to be super transparent share my journey with you guys I hope you like what I'm sharing if you do please like and subscribe It'd be awesome show me some support give me some encouragement because sometimes sitting in my living room over here trying to slang deals can feel a little bit lonely man so I would love for you to support me and uh, stick around and check it out Uh, hey, Kelly, this is Johnny. I'm uh, calling regarding the property over on uh, Wilbur's Way. Oh, okay. Yeah, what can I uh, do for you? Uh, hi, good morning. Emma, is, uh, are, is this a good time to chat? Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, so I was just looking at um, properties on market that have been, you know, on on market for over ninety days. Of course, I saw this listing, and I just uh, I wanted to get a download of kind of what's going what's going on with it and why you think it's not selling. The the sellers bought it in August, and okay. they bought it for three fifteen. Okay, yeah, they decided that Mariposa wasn't for them, so they want a little lower than where that property is. So they, but they also want to like they don't want to lose too much money. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it it's listed for higher, um, a little bit higher than um than when they bought it for just a little while ago. Yep. Um. And it's not selling because nothing is selling right now. Oh, I know. It's crazy in the market, isn't it? It's a crazy time. Yeah. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and I'm like trying to think outside the box of how I can market properties better. All of my properties are kind of stagnant right now and what I can do. But that, yeah, Wilbur's Way is a charming little, little house. Um, it is a manufactured home, yep. but <clears throat> it has 15 acres and a four bedroom septic in it, on it, but it is, uh, and I think the sellers will, will probably have to come down to their, the price that, uh, they bought it for, unfortunately, and just have to come out of pocket for realtor fees and stuff like that. But oh my gosh. That's, that's it. Well, I do have, so that's uh, interesting. And actually like, so I, I'm, a, I'm a real estate investor, right? So I did a little bit of homework on the property and just kind of looked at what the liens were on the property, what they're asking and, and all that stuff. And I work mostly with sellers that are in that type of negative equity slash, you know, kind of break even, you know, break even, um, 
area where like, Hey, I've got to sell the property for this amount. And we're, cause we're seeing so much of that with where the market has gone over the last 12 months. Right. So especially if someone's come in with like three and a half percent down on a, you know, with an FHA loan or even 5% on a conventional or, you know, whatever, um, you know, the, a lot of, a lot of sellers are in that, that kind of negative equity situation, or maybe it's not negative equity, but they can't, they can't recover their money. So what I do is I basically just do cr like creative financing on, you know, properties like this. And so my question would be is if I could come in at full asking at that 325, do you think the sellers would be open to some sort of creative financing if they didn't have to come out of pocket at all in the sale? Because they did like zero down yep. on their loan. So when they're in a loan, can they do creative financing? If we could figure it out, yes, because they want to sell this. They've already found another property yep. that they absolutely love here in Kathy's Valley and are trying to get creative on how to like do buy that one with yeah. still having this in their um having another mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, um, you know, that does, so it will, it would kind of complicate things a little bit and I, and I can give you kind of a, like a rundown on how buying an additional property would, would go. But the biggest thing is for them to, you know, really not have to come out of, come out of pocket on this property. Are they, are they in a, a cash position where they can, they can put a down payment on a new property? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they are. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So there's kind of ways around that with like lease agreements and stuff like that. So, I mean, basically what we do is we just, we come in and we take over the property subject too. So you've, I don't know if you've heard of uh, what that heard of that. You probably have, because when we take our real estate exam, they, they cover it for like one chapter in the real estate, uh, you know, book in the books that we're supposed to read or whatever. But basically we come out, come in and we take over the mortgage. We cover all closing costs, uh, agent fees, all that stuff. So they don't have to come out of pocket. And then then potentially we would just put like a renter in the property and uh, our goal would be to get the property just either cash flowing or breaking even for us as investors. So then we can write off, you know, depreciation and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, of course build equity over time. So it's a little bit out of the box for a lot of people, but for these type of, um, sellers, um, and we do a lot, it's a great option. And we do a lot of this mostly for people who are in like pre foreclosure and those types of things. They have like a couple options, you know, you can come out cash and super low, or you can just basically take over the property subject too. So, so my, my thoughts are is what I could do is I could just send like a letter of intent to purchase um, and I could send a basically a breakdown of what kind of the transaction would look like. And then your sellers could evaluate whether it's right for them or not. For some people, it works well and other people, you know, it doesn't, but it at least gets the conversation started in, a, again, kind of an out of the box, creative type of way to get the transaction done. Oh my God, a hundred percent. They just are like, we just want to get rid of this place so we can move forward and buy somewhere else. So they would totally be open to um, looking at that letter. Uh, okay, awesome. Oh my God, they'd be so happy. They'd be stoked. Okay, that's cool. Well, then let me do let me do this real quick. Let me just get your. I lost her. I think the phone just cut out. <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, cool. So all I really need, I mean, I need a little bit of information if you have it. If you don't, I can kind of work around it. But do you, ha do you happen to know what the balance on the mortgage is? Like roughly just a rough number? Uh, okay, well, they only bought it in August and it was like 0% down. Yeah. So, um, so do you know, did they have a cow half a loan on it? Did they what? Do you know what a cow halfa is? Did they did they did they did some sort of zero down pro, uh, financing through the state? Do you know or or no? I don't think it was state. No. Okay. No, no, it was just a regular like FHA, if I remember correctly. Okay, cool. Um, so then, but just ballpark me on that balance. The number I have is right around two ninety nine. That sounds about right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, two ninety nine, and then any idea what the rate is on it? I know you. I know you probably don't have all this. Just I'm just you know I always ask just to. You know, it, five or six. I can't. Or six. Uh, I'd have to pull up their pre-approval letter. Okay, got it. Um, 
Uh, okay, cool. Well, I guess I guess that that'll work. I can just I can just start with that. Do you have any idea what their current PITI is on the property, or or no? I don't. You don't. Okay, that's all good. It's all good. Cool. And then what is what's your email address, Kelly? Okay, so it's my first. Yeah, cool. Okay, give me just like probably, I just need to maybe, you know, a couple hours and I'll get something over, just get it typed up. And so basically the letter of intent just kind of outlines what it would potentially look like. It's not, you know, like a official offer. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of a, yeah. a starting point. Yeah, let's, let's start somewhere and that would be, <laughs> they'd be so happy. <laughs> they'd be stoked. Cool. And here's the thing. I mean, you know, I, I would love to make a deal on this property and make it work, but if it doesn't, this is the, the space I play in. So, you know, I'm always looking for, off market cash properties to potentially flip. You probably have a ton of investors that you work with there. If you don't, you know, just please keep me in mind. And then of course, this is uh, this area in terms of the negative equity. This is kind of what I do as well. So um, you always have access to me. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of another one right, right now, but let's just focus on this. One. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for your time, Kelly. Again, my name is Johnny and I'll have an email over to you. Just give me a couple hours. Cool. S sounds good. Awesome. Hey, look forward to hearing. Cool. Rock and roll. Later. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.